Hi, Kate here, your Astronomy Good Fairy from Glass Education, to show off a few accessibility hacks for anyone who finds the Stellarium Planetarium software to be a bit of a visual challenge. Now, I have a relatively mild form of congenital nystagmus. My eyes shake particularly when I'm looking at small things or I'm trying to track across a page. Here are some of the things I do to make Stellarium easier to use. Now, Stellarium is far from being accessible if you're blind, but if you're using Zoom text or you have problems with color perception, there's a lot of options to make the labs in the Our Place in Space curriculum much easier to use. I'm going to assume that you are already familiar with the software and have the latest version open on your desktop. I'm working on a Mac desktop computer today. Let's begin by discussing your friend, the keyboard shortcut list. In Stellarium, there is a series of icons at the far left corner of the software window. The contrast for these icons is not good. Here's what I do to make them more obvious and get the information I need. You can see that I have the menu set to remain visible. I find them easier to see if they don't pop in and out of view as you mouse over them. To pin them to the visible uh, position, scroll over to the left corner of the window. When each menu pops up, click the tiny arrows at the corner. This can be challenging if you have increased the size of the cursor. Here's an enlarged view of what you're aiming for. Whether or not your menus are pinned in place, the name of the button and its keyboard shortcut command will appear as you mouse over each icon. Unfortunately, there's no way to increase the size of the font in those commands, so this is where the shortcut list come in, comes in handy. You can find this list on the help screen. To open the help menu, find the question mark at the bottom left of your um, Stellarium window or press F1. This will display help menu. Now, if you're using a Mac computer and find the F keys are not working, you need to go into the settings menu on your computer, then to keyboard, and then select the box that says use F1, F2, etc. keys as standard function keys. That will enable the F1 commands while you're using Stellarium. Returning to Stellarium, notice at the bottom there is a large button that says Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. Once you have gotten comfortable with Stellarium, you may want to experiment with this feature. I won't be covering that here. Now let's make some changes to the font size and color in Stellarium. From the vertical left-hand menu, select the second button from the question mark at the bottom to access the configuration screen or press F2. The configuration screen will open in the middle of the Stellarium window. The Tools tab is the fifth icon from the left. Select that tab. From here we can improve the size of the font in the window itself. Scanning down from the top right corner of this screen toward the bottom you will encounter the font size box about three quarters of the way to the bottom. Type a font size or use the up and down arrows to make changes. 24 is the maximum font size for the screens. Now that you can see the screen better, move to the left until you see the box to change the font size for the rest of the interface. That's all of Stellarium. I find that 18 is as high as I can go before there is an issue with overlapping text. I can see what effect increasing font size has by clicking on the main screen to select an object in the sky at random. Yikes! What a mess! The information text completely overlaps the menus. If you have normal vision and no reading disabilities, skimming down that list is no problem. For everyone else, Let's go back to the configuration screen. The second tab at the top of the configuration screen is titled Information. You will see all the boxes are selected. Let's select only the information we will need for the Opus Lab. Start by selecting the radio button labeled None from that um, Select Objects Information row of choices. This is the third button in that row. 
Now all the boxes are unchecked and you can select only the ones you want. I'm going to select Name, the First Right Ascension Declination checkbox, Azimuth Altitude, and then jump over to the second column of choice to locate the um, type. Some of these are just my personal preferences. You will definitely need Azimuth Altitude. The information you just selected appears in the upper left hand corner of the main window each time you select an object in Stellarium. If you want a different color for those letters, go back to the Tools tab in the Configuration screen. Look for the first box labeled Overwrite Text in the first column. Check that box. Next, click the color box to the right. This will allow you to select a new color. A color palette selected pops up separately from the configuration window. Scroll around if it's not in view for you. I'm going to try this nice lime green. Watch the change in the upper left corner of the main Stellarium window to see what happens. Now you can close the configuration box. Phew! Now back to the Opus Lab. In Lab 2, you are asked to determine the sunrise and set times at different locations. There are a lot of things the writers of the curriculum want you to learn about the apparent motion of the sun in the sky, about sources of error when making observations, etc. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the techniques for getting the information you need using Stellarium and not concern myself much with providing realistic experiences and sources of error connected with visual observing. Let's just say that fully sighted people make different judgments about what time and at which point the sun sets and crosses the horizon. So let's go with our hacks here. Let's start with adding markers to the sky. Open the sky and viewing options menu. This is the third icon from the top on the left hand menu or F4 on your keyboard. When the view screen opens, find the markings tab. It is the fourth icon from the left. The window that is now in view provides many options. Each has a checkbox and a color box. Let's start by changing, checking the cardinal directions and changing the color. Check the box and then select the color box to the left. The color palette window will pop up. When you locate it, select a color that works for you and then click Save. Close the view window to see the results. I will now repeat those steps for several additional markings that will help you complete the Opus Lab 2 in Stellarium. I am going to select Azmuthal Grid. Yes, that is a real word. Azmuthal is an adjective referring to the use of altitude and azimuth as a coordinate system. So Azmuthal Grid will show you the lines of um, altitude and azimuth on the dome of the sky. I will also add the horizon line and the meridian. The horizon line is the same as the zero line of altitude. Marking it um, separately will allow you to make a different, make it a different color and can help you to work um, this lab a little more easily. The meridian is an imaginary line on the dome of the sky that runs from the south horizon overhead and down to the north point on the horizon. It divides the sky into eastern half and western half. When you are facing the south, stars, planets, and the sun reach their highest point in the sky as they cross the meridian. Notice that for the horizon and meridian marker, I could have checked three boxes. I only selected the first box on the left. I don't need the added detail that would be visible if I selected other boxes, and I definitely don't need the visual confusion. Experiment with these yourself to see what works for you. There's one last thing we can do to make it easier to see the lines we just selected. Go to the bottom of the markings window and increase the line thickness. This can really help. Locate the thickness lines box. The default is 1. You can increase this to 5. Return to the main screen. On this screen, you can try a couple more tricks to make it easier to track the sun. First, try turning off the atmosphere. Without an atmosphere, our sky would appear quite different and very dark. This can be helpful. Type the letter A 
to turn on the atmosphere or turn it off. There is also an icon for this command on the horizontal menu to the lower left. Atmosphere is the eighth icon from the left on the bottom. This may be all you need to see more clearly when the horizon is located. If it's not, it's time to turn off the ground. Turning off the ground is done by typing G or locating the uh, appropriate icon on the menu. It's the seventh icon to the left. Try it. Now that you have made the earth transparent, all the markings you selected should be clearly visible. Using these additional hints, go back to your Opus lab and complete your work. If you have other hacks that work for you or you would like additional help, put a comment in the box. I'm here to help. That's Kate Meredith, Astronomy Good Fairy, Glass Education. Good luck and have fun.